Welcome to this week's edition of the St. Paul Podcast. I'm Peter Marty, Senior Pastor of St. Paul Lutheran Church, located in the heart of Davenport, Iowa. Right here each week, you can hear a message to inspire your walk with God and hear beautiful music to fill your life. Let this podcast be your occasion to contemplate some of the deepest things in life, just as I hope it helps faith come alive for you. Katie Warren, one of the pastors here at St. Paul. And uh, whether this is the first time that you're checking out this worship podcast or you're a regular visitor, thank you for tuning in. I hope this podcast is a blessing to you today. Speaking of which, today you're going to hear one word a number of times, and that word is blessed. Blessed or blessed or blessings. This word gets translated lots of different ways in scripture, sometimes as happy or fortunate or favored, depending on which translation you might be reading. And we also use this word blessed in all sorts of ways in just our everyday language. We talk about feeling blessed or praying for blessings. Many of us might be familiar with that moment of blessing that take, takes place at the end of our worship, which borrows words from the Old Testament where we say, may the Lord bless you and keep you. But what I want to think about today is, what does any of that really mean? What are we trying to say when we talk about feeling blessed or receiving God's blessings or praying a blessing upon others? What does it mean to be blessed? What do we mean when we use that sort of language? And maybe more importantly, what does God mean when words of blessing are invoked or talked about in Scripture? So today we're going to spend a little bit of time unpacking this word, blessed, and how it shapes our own understandings of faith. And as a frame of reference, we'll use the opening words of Jesus' Sermon on the Mount, which has come to be known as the Beatitudes. It might be words that are familiar to you. So here are those words uh, from Matthew's Gospel, chapter 5, God's words of blessing. When Jesus saw the crowds, he went up the mountain, and after he sat down, his disciples came to him. Then he began to speak and taught them, saying, Blessed are the poor in spirit, for theirs is the kingdom of heaven. Blessed are those who mourn, for they will be comforted. Blessed are the meek, for they will inherit the earth. Blessed are those who hunger and thirst for righteousness, for they will be filled. Blessed are the merciful, for they will receive mercy. Blessed are the pure in heart, for they will see God. Blessed are the peacemakers, for they will be called children of God. Blessed are those who are persecuted for righteousness' sake, for theirs is the kingdom of heaven. Blessed are you when people revile you and persecute you and utter all kinds of evil against you falsely in my account. Rejoice and be glad, for your reward is great in heaven. 
For in the same way, they persecuted the prophets who were before you. So now let's take a listen to this reflection on that passage and how we might come up with a new understanding of what it means for God to call us blessed. I want to start us off this morning with a question that quickly at least popped into my head as I was scanning the gospel reading that I just read for you a moment ago. One that I'd like to maybe use as our our focus for our reflection today. The question is this, what does it mean to be blessed? How would you define that word or what does it look like in our lives of faith? Blessed, blessed, blessing, those words show up in scripture often as it does today repeatedly in what's been become known as the Beatitudes. But it's just as likely, honestly, to show up outside of our particular faith setting and everyday language or conversation. You'll find it cross-stitched on pillows or in framed sayings like, blessed to be a blessing. At one point or another, I would venture to guess, many of us have said something to the effect of, I just feel blessed. Or someone has said to us, have a blessed day. What does that mean, really? How does a blessed day look different from a non-blessed day? I'm not sure. What are we trying to say with that word? Many of us, I think, have an inclination to use the word blessed when describing kind of our various daily events or experiences. As just a little bit of an experiment, I did a quick search for the keyword or hashtag blessed on Twitter and Facebook a couple days ago to see how people used this word. And I came up with a variety of responses, as you might imagine. According to what I found on social media anyway, much of our blessedness appears when our favorite sports team wins a game. We'll see if Chiefs or Bengals fans feel more blessed this afternoon. Or when high school students receive college admission offers or get an A on a test. One person felt particularly blessed by the delicious burrito they were eating, enough to share a picture of it on Twitter. Blessed by a new pair of shoes, or a fresh haircut, or scoring Taylor Swift concert tickets. My personal favorite was one person who said they felt exceptionally blessed to find a dozen eggs for less than $5 at the grocery store this week. I'm not sure how or when it started, but it's as though we've slowly started to confuse blessings with luck, almost using those words interchangeably, if you think about it. So that if we experience the good fortune of a delicious meal or front row parking, we say we're blessed, when really what we mean to say is we're lucky. We're fortunate to have been in the right place at the right time or to have benefited from powers that are outside of our own control. It's wonderful. It's a gift. It's something to be grateful for. But much of the time, what we might mistakenly refer to as a blessing is really just random good luck. So we return to that original question then. What does it actually mean then to be blessed? I want us to think about that question because we hear this word over and over again in our gospel reading, nine times to be exact. And it's the beginning of a a larger section of Matthew's gospel here, which we call the Sermon on the Mount. It's Jesus' first official teaching or sermon. It's the very first thing he chooses to focus on the opening kernels of wisdom he's imparting upon the disciples and those who are gathered around him. And what does he choose to talk about? But this idea of blessing, being called blessed. And it feels like ever since then, we have been trying to figure out just what Jesus meant by those words or what was he trying to imply. Whenever we hear the Beatitudes, I think we're often struck by their kind of natural cadence to them, their poetic beauty. There is a reason where we often hear them read at 
funerals or in times of grief. In a sense, I think we admire what the words say, but when we start to look a little bit closer, the implication of such blessings might be a little bit overwhelming. It can almost sound like the Beatitudes are some sort of instructions or commandments to seek a less enjoyable life, Although, as though we just need to try harder to be poorer or hungrier or more persecuted than we might currently be. It's almost as though we particularly love the second half of each of those blessed sentences, but not so much the first half. We'd all like to receive more comfort and mercy and closeness with God, the kingdom of heaven, as Jesus is naming these things off. But if the only way to achieve those, that second half of each sentence, of each blessing, is to go through the first, then most of us might just pass on the blessing entirely. And yet I'm not sure that was what Jesus' intention was to be. That it's tempting to assume if, if certain categories of people are named as blessed, then by default it would mean that others are not. That there's some kind of hierarchy or ranking of who has more favor in God's eyes, as though there's only so much blessing to go around. But instead, if we tried today, to offer some succinct definition of what a blessing from God actually is. It might be as simple as this. A naming of what we already know to be true, really. What we already are, a beloved child of God. You can call it blessed or happy or favored. Lots of different translations depending on what words you see or what scripture you're reading, but whatever it is, this blessing is given to us freely. It's not something that's earned or given or a reward for when we've worked hard enough or endured enough hardship in our lives. There isn't anywhere where it says that there's a limited number of blessings handed out each day, which means that if I am blessed, then you are not or vice versa. Our identity, who we are, is a gift from God to us without condition. It's an author named Kate Bowler who wrote about the Beatitudes and she said, it's almost as though we could picture Jesus sort of pulling examples from the very people who are sitting around him, listening in that day. He's looking them in the eyes and saying, blessed are you, Jamie, even though you are deeply grieving the loss of your mother. And blessed are you, Sarah, even as you struggle to find hope today. Blessed are you, John, as you long for healing. Jesus was just using the everyday examples of those around him who were weeping or hungering or wanting to belong and saying, you matter. You are loved, you are blessed, even and maybe especially when you don't feel like it. He probably could have gone on and on and looked at every single person in the eyes and named their situation, their struggle of each person sitting on the hillside that day. And we could imagine the sorts of blessings Jesus could speak to every single one of us in this room too. Blessed are you who wrestle with doubt, and you whose faith is unwavering. Blessed are you who seek forgiveness, and blessed are you who haven't found the courage to apologize. Blessed are you who feel, feel fulfilled or at peace or are having a perfect day, and blessed are you who are restless or alone. Blessed are you right where you're at because you are filled with the love of God and you are surrounded by the peace of God. And that may not mean that your days are bursting with good fortune or happy experiences or joy, but it does in fact mean that you are blessed beyond measure. It is 
easy, I think, to hear these beatitudes, these familiar words that we've heard before, and equate blessings with luck. But Jesus spent so much time blessing people right where they were at. The lucky and often the unlucky ones, the ones who were falling apart and those who had it all put together. It's not that we have to have been on our deathbed or deep in grief or without a penny to our name in order to be blessed by God. But I think if we were going to add any addition to our definition of blessing, it might be this, that if we are not those things that Jesus named that we heard today, then we might also choose to bless the meek and the mourning or the sick and the hungry. Not that we earn our blessing, but that we become a blessing to our neighbor, whatever our own circumstances might be. That as generously as God bless us, we get to lead with blessing toward others too then. That if you think about it, Jesus spent every waking moment of his life trying to alleviate the suffering of others, not turning a blind eye to the hungry or the sick or the incarcerated or the isolated. He never gives people just blank platitudes about how things will get better in time. Jesus spoke blessings and then he embodied them. He lived them. And then he asks us to do the same, that we are both blessed and a blessing. We're surrounded by the love and the joy and the goodness of God, and then we do something with it. It's in that sharing of our own blessedness that in Jesus' words, the kingdom of heaven is felt right here and now. And so I hope you hear one more time at least, blessed are you. Now, Become what you are, give away what it is you seek, and in that process discover the gift of being neither lucky nor unlucky, but just simply blessed. Amen.
turn now to God in prayer, speaking those words Jesus taught us in the Lord's Prayer. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done, on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. Save us from the time of trial and deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Amen. May you go about your day today knowing that you are, in fact, blessed beyond measure. And may you live in such a way that seeks to bless others around you. May the Lord bless you and keep you today and every day. Amen. I hope you've enjoyed this podcast, and thanks for your support of the ministries of St. Paul Lutheran Church. Our commitment to projects that lend hope to other people stretches across the country and around the world. We hope that in a good way, you feel a part of that reach. Tune in next Thursday for another edition of the St. Paul Podcast.